Transistors are the backbone of electronics. They can be used as amplifiers or switches. Let's start off with the first ever functional transistor, the bipolar junction transistor. Like for most transistors, there are two complementary types available. For the bipolar junction transistor, these are the NPN and PMP transistor. The symbol shows a small arrow which allows to distinguish the two of them. The middle terminal is the base, B. The terminal without the arrow is the collector, C. The terminal with an arrow is the emitter, E. The behavior of a bipolar junction transistor is defined by a couple of currents and voltages. These are the base emitter voltage, VBE, the collector emitter voltage, VCE, the base current, IB, and the collector current, IC. These currents and voltages depend on each other in various ways. This is given by the different characteristics of the transistor. They describe the behavior of the transistor from different perspectives. There are the input characteristic, the output characteristic, and the transfer characteristic. The input characteristic relates the base emitter voltage VBE and the base current IB. It shows a diode-like behavior as is expected. The output characteristic shows the relation between the collector emitter voltage VCE and the collector current IC. Instead of a single line, there is a multitude of characteristics. Which one is active is determined by the base emitter voltage VBE or the base current IB. The transfer characteristic links input and output of the transistor. It plots the base emitter voltage VBE on the x-axis and the collector current IC on the y-axis. The curve is again similar to the one of a diode. Another characteristic between input and output is the current gain, which relates the base current IB and the collector current IC. The curve is an almost straight line, and its slope is determined by the current gain B. A bipolar junction transistor can be operated in a couple of different modes. All of them can be identified in the output characteristic. There's the cutoff region where no current is flowing. The forward active region in which the transistor behaves like a current source. The saturation region with its strong variation of IC with respect to VCE. And lastly, the reverse active region. As the transistor's behavior changes from one region of operation to the other, so do the formulas for different electrical quantities. In the forward active region, the transistor's operation can be described by these equations. VEA is the early voltage, which is a neat way to quantify the slope of the different lines in the forward active output characteristic. The fact that the collector current is a function of the base emitter voltage makes forward active the main region of operation for analog circuits. In saturation, the transistor's collector emitter voltage basically equals the collector emitter saturation voltage. This voltage is small and almost constant while the collector current can change quite a bit. Saturation is the region of operation for which the transistor behaves like a closed switch. In the cutoff region, the transistor conducts almost no current and behaves like an open switch. This makes cutoff and saturation the predominant regions of operation in digital circuits. Now, as a short recap, I would like to ask you to identify the different terminals of a bipolar junction transistor. Next, please label the different electrical quantities we used for our transistor. And finally, please identify 
the output characteristic of a bipolar junction transistor.